Hello, welcome to Escaping the Echo Chamber. Today I want to talk about uh, gun control, specifically as it re relates to the Florida school shooting. Uh, there's just this huge amount of, uh, I see, rhetoric, and, um, and I don't like what's going to come of this. Whether it's what the students are pushing for, um, correction, whether or not what it's the media through use of the students and I'll say exploitation of these students is pushing for or what the NRA is pushing for to avoid what the, you know, uh, mainstream media is pushing for because um, the there's this narrative being pushed that this is clear evidence that gun control is needed. But if you look at the facts of the case, um, this, yes, you're dealing with an individual that legally bought his weapons. Um, he did not purchase them through illegal means. He was under 21. So some of the things uh, he, he, that, that are being proposed is raising the age of um to be able to buy a long gun 221 and uh also banning guns like the r15 the simple fact is how many mass shootings were committed by a person between the ages of 18 and 21 who purchased their guns legally There, it can't, you can't, I'm trying to understand, how do you rationalize taking one specific as, aspect of an incident and saying, okay, now we need to make a blanket rule across the country that's going to drastically affect every 18 to 21 year old in the country. I mean, that's in itself especially to people on the on the left who have just been arguing against the right doing the same thing with regards to immigration like how how where does the at what point do you stop and say wait a minute i'm doing the same thing they were doing with with, with immigrants you've got a uh, uh, an immigrant uh, an illegal immigrant kills a young woman in in california kate steinley and they, oh, yes, we need to ban immigrants. We need to deport them. But you're, this blanket rule based on the actions of this one person is being put forth. And you'll say, no, but there's, there's plenty of decent, um, hardworking uh, immigrants who have come here uh, who are not documented. And you're just, you can't just make this blanket rule because of the, the actions of a few but we're going to make a blanket rule based on the actions of one kid that uh, uh, arguably was was mental, that may have been mentally ill. What? How many eighteen to twenty one year twenty one years old? How many eighteen to twenty one year olds own long guns and haven't hurt anybody? How many hunt responsibly? How many go to the shooting range responsibly? How many have managed to protect themselves with their guns responsibly and without hurting anybody or, re or just protect themselves? Because in some cases, protecting yourself may require you to actually hurt somebody. Um, if the person refuses to back down, if somebody uh, tries to attack them, they have their long gun. Um, and I would assume that this would most likely be in a home situation uh, where they would have to, you know, pull out the long gun and hope that the person would then leave or surrender. In some cases, the person may not, and uh, they may actually have to pull the trigger and, and, and kill somebody or, or injure them. But the whole point is, you cannot... If you just, I mean, at what point, how, what kind of cognitive dissonance has to exist for you to completely divorce uh, the, the argument that you were just making uh, about immigration and immigrants 
and not making blanket rules based, based on the actions of one or a few when you have su such a, a wide example of people who are, you know, do, do not fit that, that uh, narrative. How, what kind of cognitive dissonance exists for you then to say, but we're going to do the exact same thing with this other issue. We're going to make a blanket statement. We're going to make, oh, no 18-year-old should have a, a, a firearm at all. We're going to do the exact same thing that we just criticized you and that we just finished. Criticizing. We, we continue to criticize you on this and we're doing the exact same thing simultaneously with regards to the gun issue. And then you, you've got, you know, the, the AR-15 issue uh, is being parroted not just for uh, 18 to 21 year, year olds. They're saying nobody should own an uh, AR-15. This is part of the narrative that's going on. There are many calling for an assault weapons ban. I'm guessing similar to or maybe even more stringent than the uh, 93 assault weapons bill. Assault weapons ban. Um, and many of the people that are calling for this aren't consistently defining an assault weapon um, or accurately defining an assault weapon because yeah I'm, there <laughs> there's significant issues with that definition but once again you're you're making a blanket you want to make a blanket rule based on the actions of some when there are so many how many millions of gun owners out there responsibly keep their guns, responsibly use their guns, responsibly shoot their guns at the ranges, responsibly store their gun in the houses, and have responsibly and successfully managed to defend themselves and their families with these guns. Because I've seen these kids, I, I, in fact, I, I think it was on Bill Maher's show, and you know, one of these kids says, how dare you? How dare you? Uh, uh, we've went through this. You don't get the right to say... Okay, wait a minute. Let's stop. You survived a very tragic and traumatic situation. In that situation, it was perpetrated by a person who had a firearm. How many people out there have survived situations, not perhaps not mass shootings, but have survived attacks on themselves, their homes, their families, by using guns, by being armed. How many people have successfully are alive today to speak about it, to speak about a situation because they had a gun in their home, they had a gun on their person, they had a gun available to use when they or their family or their home was attacked. How many people? So no, you're being just as disrespectful to all of those people who have who are alive today because they had guns at, for themselves at the proper time because they didn't have to just get on the phone and hope that the cops would arrive in time to stop this person who was either an intruder either uh, uh attacking their person where they were able to to defend themselves and not wait have to wait for the police to, to arrive because who knows how long the police will take even if the police are doing their best are operating at peak capacity if the police are if the nearest police car is five minutes away you've got somebody in your house right now attacking you the time it takes you to get your gun and defend yourself and your family Versus waiting for the cops to get there, even if they're doing everything they should right, could result in you and your family being dead by the time the cops arrive. But these kids, for instance, that particular kid um, that was on this on on Bill Maher's show, needs to realize you're not the only person in the world. You're not the only person who's faced gun violence. You're not the only person who survived gun violence. And quite frankly, you survived this 
based on based on the information that's available right now, you did not survive this action because of the cops. In fact, because of the cops, it is because of the police department and law enforcement in this particular case that you were even a victim, a potential victim of this. It's because of their their failures to adequately respond to numerous numerous warnings, complaints, and 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 and, and, and information about this individual that that put you in this position. It was the failure of the, the officers on site to respond in a in a adequate manner to like enter the building th that that could have drastically lessened the damage done i mean if you just look at this this case this is the worst case to be using as an impetus for gun control this is act this case is actually a prime example of why people need to arm themselves this is a prime example of why the, the, for for real this the narrative that should be coming out of here is okay we need we need to make sure people are armed themselves we need to make sure there's more than one person uh on, on school grounds that's able to defend the kids because if we're dealing with a coward like that we need to make sure there's as many p people possible in case some coward decides i don't want to do anything and freezes somebody else is available to be able to take action and protect the, the children in the school um yeah this case is the worst case is one of the worst cases for you or anybody else to be using as a as an example as to why there needs to be gun control because if the cops had done their job this this individual would not have uh uh the, the suspected alleged shooter would not have been able to do what he did and that's what's that's one of the things that's so problematic with this it's like you're i'm seeing people um who are supposed to be journalists there's some i'm not surprised of you know um you you could say your 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 bigger outlets i'm not surprised um that they're doing this but then there's some i'm seeing that tend to be much more even keeled um that are that are still you know trying to push a narrative i mean sheriff israel is a is a complete and utter utter scumbag i mean just just watching his interviews and his arrogance worries me not in just specifically not in relation just to this case but if he's that arrogant that's it, it, it that immune to self-reflection to to taking responsibility for massive failures how much danger is that community in with him as their what their chief law enforcement officer the, 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 this is a significant problem I, I i worry about how many times how many people's rights have been violated because he just he has this this sense of that he is unimpeachable that uh, that he has to answer to no one uh from, from what i've seen and that in itself is is immensely concerning i mean this just in this case is just a symptom of a problem that is is that clearly extends beyond you know just this this just this mass shooting but uh the failure i mean i i see even uh there's one kid who um wanted to defend the the police and and law enforcement who completely dropped the ball on this and put so many people in in harm's way um assuming that everything that this kid is actually responsible for the shooting there's so many opportunities to stop him before th this this happened um that were that were missed that were dropped that were ignored i mean when if you have people um calling saying he's threatening to shoot up a school two years ago if two years before this happens they're saying he's threatening to shoot up a school 
What are you waiting for? Do your job. But yet, here we are. And people are trying to, I'm just seeing constant deflection. Um, people are trying to make this about um, when people criticize these young people. Oh, you, you're horrible. They, they've survived a trauma. Yes, they have survived a trauma. Which is precisely why you shouldn't be exploiting them. Which is precisely why they're not in the best position to be deciding policy. If you're dealing with somebody who's suffering, who very well may be suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, think about it. They just survived a mass shooting. They've seen uh, fellow students, friends, teachers murdered, killed right there while they're, you know, hiding in, in rooms, hoping not to die. They're, they're experiencing this trauma and your idea is, hey, let's quick parade all these kids in front of the cameras. Let's quick use these children as props so we can get through an agenda. How much of a scumbag do you have to be to be exploiting these kids like that? That's on you. That's on the media that is, is knowingly doing this because they have an agenda that they're trying to promote. That's, that's reprehensible. Because you can, you can sit and, 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 and point fingers at people who are criticizing these kids. But you got to look at yourselves. There's no way in hell you should be parading these kids everywhere and, then, and trying to use them as, as the, the reason why uh, gun control law should pass. Win on the strength of your arguments. Win on logic and reason. But you can't. Especially not in this case, you can't, because logic and reason from being applied from this case show you that law, law enforcement failed at so many levels and thus people should be arming themselves to protect themselves to deal with such monumental screw-ups like this. But those, I mean, this is the, the nature of tribalism. Um, which we're seeing in political discourse today. It's our team versus theirs. Team red versus team blue. And I mean, I'm seeing like when I'm seeing black people just support gun control. I'm like, whoa, whoa. we <laughs> as black people, we should start. We really need to get away from this tribalism nonsense because gun control is seriously not going to be in our best interest. How can you talk about how much of a racist Donald Trump is? How much of a racist Jeff Sessions is? How, how, how empowered white supremacist organizations are becoming? And then say, you know what? But we need to take away the citizens' guns. Whose guns are they coming for first? In fact, with... A racist like Donald Trump, if you believe Donald Trump is a racist, if you believe he's a supporter of white supremacists, how in the world can you sit there and say, yeah, let's make laws banning firearms, banning long guns. Do you think they're going to go after the guns of these white supremacist organizations? Or you think they're going straight for Chicago? <laughs> Better think. Think where they, the first place they will go. Even though Chicago already has got some super strict laws. I mean, they're, they're, they were already headed to Chicago. In fact, they might already be in Chicago. I've got to look that up. But, I mean, and just start tossing black people in jail, violating their rights, stopping for I mean, seriously, think about how much of a police presence now will exist in black communities, more so under if, if gun control laws are passed and what will be used as the justification. Well, we need to get these guns. So we need to find out who has them. We need, we need, to, we need to check. We need to start to, how, how, badly, how badly is the, the Fourth Amendment going to be violated to, to, to enforce this law? And who's going to suffer? How many more black people are going to be tossed into prison 
behind subsequent gun control laws. Come on, black people. We got to be smarter than this. Don't just side with them because they're the left, because they're the Democrats, because they spout lip service to us, you know, occasionally. Because remember, these are the same people that are saying cops can't be trusted. Cops are, are, are racially profiling. Cops are, are murdering black people. And then they're saying, but cops are the only ones that should have guns. Are you serious? Do you not, not, have we not been paying attention to history? Have we not seen what gun control was used for? Somebody like Ronald Reagan. Oh, wait, wait. The, the Black Panthers got guns. Whoa, no, no, no. We got to stop this. We got to change the law. So it's time. <laughs> it's time to stop falling for the same old, same old nonsense and and realize that this issue this is this case is definitely not a good example of why gun control should be uh, implemented I don't know if there is one uh, in fact I don't think there is I'd be willing to debate it I'd be willing to discuss it um, but the facts of it, the facts that as we realize them now, definitely show that there's not any debate in this issue. Law enforcement failed on for years, for years. Law enforcement failed to do what they were supposed to do. During the incident, law enforcement continued to fail. After the incident, how does this kid get off off site? If this is the kid that did it, how did he get out of the building, off of off the campus, and have to be arrested hours later someplace else? How does that make any sense? How many failures have compiled for you to, to, to before you stop and realize, you know, yeah, let's not even talk about gun control now. This is not the time. This is not the case. This is not the incident that will support uh, that making any sense. But there's another issue of what the NRA is doing. The NRA had the nerve, the audacity to call itself the oldest civil rights organization. When uh, what is Wayne, Pai, Wayne, Wayne Lapierre the chairman? This is the same asshole who called for a national database of the mentally ill. You scumbag. You fucking scumbag. Seriously. <laughs> a national database of the mentally ill? That's... Oh, ooh, I, I, that, I despise Wayne LaPierre. I despise him. Because that was some crazy... I mean... You care, you don't give a damn about the Constitution if you're calling for a national database of the mentally ill. And so all of you people that are supporting the Second Amendment realize that there's some people who are actually fighting for the Second Amendment and there's some people who are just trying to fight for their own bottom line. He's just fighting for his own bottom line because he's willing to throw the First Amendment out because he wants to talk about video games. He wants to shift, he wants to violate every... He's willing to sacrifice any other amendment within the Constitution to give the appearance that he's fighting for the Second Amendment. And remember, he doesn't even fight for the Second Amendment uh, across the board. Mm -hmm. Deathly silent on Philando Castile. N none to say then. This is a dude, like, the, the, right now, it, it, it's, I'm calling on gun owners to just start asking for radic radically different uh, 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 representation in, in, in the NRA because if you don't have somebody that can defend the, the second amendment without trying to throw other, without trying to have the other sacrifice the rest of the bill of rights, like they gotta go. I mean, you, you, you don't give a damn about the constitution and you have like, you're, you're just completely incompetent. 
because there should you should be able to just make the defense of the constitution in fact using other other amendments should bolster your ability to defend the second amendment and defend uh uh argue against the government infringing on these rights but your willingness to sacrifice other rights for the sake of of trying to protect your bottom line is a heart it's 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 ridiculous it reeks of somebody who doesn't it doesn't know anything well anyway that's it i've spoken enough about this for right now um clearly you know where i stand but i encourage you to comment if you disagree if you agree i want to see where you stand thank you and i'll see you next episode